I'm a little sad right now. I want to be happy. Yeah. Sad. Don't don't even ask him, Travis. What do you? All right. Uh, go ahead, ask him. I know what he's gonna say. Uh, why are you so sad? <laughs> I I need I need ratings. Oh, here it comes. I, I, got, I gotta have ratings. So you would stop crying if people gave you more ratings? I would feel so much better if people gave us ratings, you know. Wow, that's a very quick turnaround. That was quick. That was pretty fast. Rate and review. Rate and re- really, really rate and review. Makes me happy. Give the show five stars. And five. That's yeah. five. Not four. Yep. Not six. No, and, just five. Five's good. <laughs> I like and, five. And I'm... In all seriousness, it really helps people find the show, and we love to see your feedback. Hello. If you don't stop bothering me about ratings, I'm gonna, I swear to God, you're making me lose my mind. I need ratings. Ratings. For what? I, I don't want to be underrated. I don't need ratings. I personally have plenty of good self-esteem around this show. I think we're doing a good job. We need like people who listen, who say, hello, I love you. For what? Don't you want to be loved? I want to be loved. We are don't you podcast love me? Cast lovable. No. If you're listening people. to this really pathetic thing right now and you want to just stop, the Once easiest way to make that happen is to is to review the show and rate it on Apple Podcasts. It's not going to stop. Your head. He won't this quit. This is our moment. We need to have <laughs> rate the show, please. Okay, Adam, what? Knock it off. Adam. Bo. Hey, Travis. Yes. Ah, oh, I see we're all here. Oh. Well, where else would we be? I don't think of you being all there, so I don't know what. (laughs) 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 Fell into my trap. Um, So Apple lockdown tells me something very interesting about the world today. But before I tell you what it tells me, Travis. Yes. Spock. Why don't you tell (laughs) the listeners, our nice listeners, about what Apple Lockdown does. Apple Lockdown is meant to be a security setting for your iPhone that will prevent it from getting any uh, zero-click malware, specifically the Pegasus malware that we've seen a lot of headlines about. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple's new effort to protect iPhones. Lockdown mode is meant to shield high-profile users like politicians from state-sponsored hackers. It turns off several vulnerable iPhone features, reducing the number of ways that hackers can attack a target. Pegasus is spyware. Think of it statecraft spyware. So like Jason Bourne would would, would slip this into your phone like like uh, like a I don't know. I, I don't know because I'm watching Kravis is crinkling his eyes, which tells me he, <laughs> he thinks it's something different than we're saying. It is spyware. It's spyware and steroids. It is really just in a league of its own. Excuse me, but like bodybuilder, bodybuilder on steroids. It's still a bodybuilder. Sure. I mean, potato, potato, but it, this is something where it says zero click malware. Tomato, tomato. And it got a DeVita. So listen, but what, 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 why do I care about spyware? Oh, I rhymed. Well, the main thing to keep in mind about this is you don't need to install anything. You don't need to download anything. It will install itself to your phone if you get it by text. Whoa, you didn't answer my question. Sure. Adam. Bo, uh, Bo, yes. Yeah, that's me. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Why, why, like, none of us really need to be too concerned about spyware. Pegasus is, it was developed in Israel. It's very famous uh, software that was was developed specifically to spy on reporters, journalists, movie stars. Dissidents. But more like dissidents, like Adam said, yeah. And so I don't see myself as, I mean, I, I, I may be a lot of things, but like of interest to a government is not one of them. Speaking on behalf of your government, Bo, let me just tell you, you're of great interest to us. <laughs> oh, yeah, for my, for my piddly little tax. <laughs> tax. There was like this Plunk. great line from the movie The American President where it says, she's got an FBI file, to which the senator responded, my mother has an FBI file. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, so, so, so Apple cares enough about this that they've offered a $2 million bug bounty in addition to 
I think it was $10 million for some other project that, is, that has to do with stopping this kind of spyware. But they're really concerned, and their answer is to lock your phone down, which, like, how is that different from just turning your phone off? Well, the main thing about the lockdown mode is that it prevents um, most incoming forms of communication for your phone. So that means even well, if your phone... Well, no, 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 that's not true. It prevents most incoming forms of media that can infect your device. Right, yeah. Important distinction, yeah. Um, but it also means that if you, say, plug in your phone into something, into a device, that uh, in lockdown mode, that does not allow that to uh, connect. So, Adam, I had this vision of, like, a submarine, like, sealing its, va you know, its little turret and pumping the water out and going underwater as lockdown mode. But that's not it at all. All it is is a, it's actually a functioning mode so that you can use your device without fear of somebody hacking you with Pegasus. I still think it's bonkers that anyone needs that. Um, like, I, I just don't see myself ever using that feature. Well, the issue is not whether you're going to use it or not. The issue is whether someone can get through lockdown mode, which Apple says they can't, in order to crawl into your phone for the purpose of spying on you. So this is for, like, James Bond, for example. He's the Pegasus guy. He's the guy that's going to get this thing. Well, in the, in the movie Goldfinger, there was a button in his car. And he said, whatever you do, don't touch the button. The button was the lockdown mode? What was it? No, the button was the ejector seat. And... Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, so he needs that. I don't. I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean, you know, it, if he didn't like someone sitting next to him, you know, they weren't wearing the right perfume. Whatever it was, he could okay. press the button and pss, they were gone. No, but I get it. And you have so like... But with this lockdown feature, it is that button for the person you don't want to have sitting next to you, which is, you know, in this case, a spy. But, uh, you know, this stuff does have a way of trickling down, Travis? Yeah, because as soon as you know that there's the possibility of zero-click malware out there, that becomes a very enticing idea for folks, just because they can say, all right, it's possible. We know someone's already made this. How do we make this on our end? Just like when people talk about the government wants a back door into your Apple phone or whatever. The issue was always, and what if the government gets breached and that information gets out in the wild? It goes, since we're dealing with malware as a service, software as a service, that people are taking it, tweaking it, and making it more and more user-friendly, making it easier, a lower barrier of entry for anyone who wants to do this kind of stuff. So it's all yeah. about lowering the barrier to entry. And the, and the idea that there could be a kind of low-rent Pegasus, and I think Pegasus is very expensive, um, you know, would be appealing to your garden variety stalkers and, and, that's, and or identity thieves, hackers, you know, a lot of people would be interested in this stuff. Angry so, ex-spouses, you know, stuff like that. It would be nice, though, if there was something other than just blocking all the, you know, you know, turning your smartphone into a semi-dumb phone. Yeah, I mean, it, it's technically the equivalent of just turning your iPhone into a ham radio and just saying that, you know, now it's secure. It, <laughs> it's <laughs> I know, it's not quite that bad. bad. <laughs> Welcome to What the Hack, a show about hackers, scammers, and the people they go after. I'm Adam, virtual velociraptor. I'm Bo, cyber amber knob on the handstick of a billionaire with the DNA of something really awesome inside. That's me. And I'm Travis, cyber chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Andy Pham shares his story of a white collar crime influenced real estate fiasco. Andy, welcome to What the Hack. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Zapier. Zapier, what does it do? Zapier is this really cool online program that lets online apps communicate with one another and it lets you automate tasks. The average Zapier user saves over $10,000 in recovery time every year. And that's why, believe it or not, there are 1.8 million people 
and businesses who use Zapier to streamline their work. Really, if there's anything online that you get sick of having to do over and over and over again, and you think, boy, if there's the only way to automate this and not have to go through this process, Zapier will have your back. You guys know that I have worked a lot with coding in the past. And my personal favorite type of coding project is one where I don't actually need to write any code. And Zapier allows you to do that. There's no coding involved. Uh, either of you can just jump right in and uh, start automating tasks on your end with no prior knowledge required. Wait, even me? Even you, Adam. Oh my gosh. See for yourself why teams at Airtable, Dropbox, HubSpot, Zendesk, and thousands of other companies use Zapier every day to automate their business. Try Zapier today at uh, zapier.com, Z-A-P-I-E-R.com backslash W-T-H. Is that free? Did I see free? It is free. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R.com backslash W-T-H. Where are you coming from today, Andy? I'm in uh, Mesa, Arizona today. And we I moved here from, uh, I own a self-storage in, in uh, Mesa, Arizona. I built this in 2006. Myself and a group of uh, investors, we bought 20 acres of land. And in 2006, we built uh, 60,000 square feet of self-storage out in the East Mesa, off the 60. And when we, I was building this facility, this is, uh, two, we bought, I bought this property in 2005. And remember, this is at the time when we pay at the top of the market. Yeah. Then I got the entitlements, built it, and the market crashed, you know. Oh, and, yeah. And mm -hmm. this is like in 2008, when uh, took out a loan from a bank and they said, well, you know, your valuations, when the market crash, the bank will, will look at your, you know, your, the value of the property. They say, well, is, you, you're not value at $10 million anymore. So what we're going to do is we're not going to fund your last construction draw. And so what I did, I had to move out to Mesa, Arizona in 2008 and work with all my subs and say, look, guys, I need to get my certificate of occupancy. And if you can help me, just get get me to the finish line. We we all can get paid at the end. That's how this project. Would, and that's know. where you are right now. And did you? Yes. And 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 that's brilliant. So you you uh, you talked your subs into getting busy with you to get it finished, and then you can, huh? Yeah. Then, then we all got paid. That's a big deal. Then what I did is for me to, in order to get this thing rented up during this recession, yeah, I, I didn't even have the money for the software. So what I did is I just went to Office Depot, bought a calendar, <laughs> and I put a sign outside, and I slept on the floor. In my, uh, we built a manager quarter, so I slept on the floor, and I put up flags and say, you know, uh, move in specials. Wow. Then everyone move in. I ordered, we have a huge uh, retirement community right next to us. So when people would drive up with their trucks, then I, what I do, I run out and I say, let me load, unload a truck for you. I'll wow. stack all the boxes hmm. inside the I was, I was about to be super jealous of how successful you are, but like, it's all you, man. Go for it. No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's tremendous. That's tremendous. Well, this is, I mean, this is the American dream for sure. Right. So let me mm -hmm. ask you, you you obviously look like a young guy, certainly compared to Bo and me. Hey. Anyone looks like a young guy. <laughs> I was guy, about to apply really for a job. Like you know, a, you just you, messed. That's like tortious interference. I was going to ask him for a job because I'm so sick of you. And you know what? <laughs> now he thinks I'm old. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm actually 53 years old. Oh, so no. am I. I could yeah. work with you. You do look really quite good for 53. Bo is actually, but you are Thank really you. 53, right, Bo? Kind of? Sort of? I, I, on the other hand, am 72. So I, uh, and, and Bo and my 10 year old, they keep me up. And Travis, and Travis, and Travis is going, 23. No, I can't not. believe yeah. I'm working with old people <laughs> like this. But. Oh, please. I think no, you were everyone's asking. been assuming I'm in my 40s since I was about five. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that voice of yours. So, so, so Andy, you're getting, let me ask yeah. have you always, I mean, has this been your, I mean, is real estate your thing? Have you always done real estate or? So when I when I, I came here I came to America in 1981, uh, so from Vietnam. So my parents my in 1980, my parents my mom put me on a boat, 
this is after the, you know, when the United States pulled out Vietnam in 1975. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we, we didn't, my dad was in the, he fought for the South. So he decided he's not going to leave when my grandmother and her family, my mom's side, decided to leave with the Americans in 1975. So I lived under communism for five years, you know. So at 10 years old, my uh, during this time in Vietnam, there was a war in Cambodia in 1980, and she didn't want me to fight, to go join, because in Vietnam, when you're 18, you have to join the military. And under communism, you don't have a choice, you know? So they're gonna send you to fight in Cambodia. You're not gonna make it back alive, you know? So at that time, you know, my mom decided to sell everything that she owns and put me on a boat with other kids. Then we were drifted out to sea for three days until we were rescued by the offshore oil rig in the middle of the ocean. And after that, they put us on the islands uh, in Malaysia. Then that's how I grew up on the islands for a year and a half until my grandmother and sponsored me here in the U.S. So it took like two you're, years. You're, you say your grandmother, wow. Andy. Yes. Um, Okay, so uh, I assume you've already optioned the rights to your life story for a movie. Because if not, Bo and I are going to. We're the we're movie. I'm like we're we're going to start negotiating your last two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is right here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you landed here at five and 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 immediately started doing real estate. There must have been something uh, else. <laughs> no, I landed uh, when I was eleven years old. Eleven, in 1980. okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. 1981. See, that's that's yeah, it, incredible. It's yeah, also it's still a little young to do real estate. So, when you where did you move? Where was your grandmother? Uh, we grew up in the San Fernando Valley. Oh, Bernada nice. Hills. Mm-hmm. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, what did you study in college? I studied political science. Okay. Yes. So yes. did I. <laughs> <laughs> and was that something that you were able to uh, leverage into real estate, or was it just sort of uh, parallel interests? Well, it's just, I, I thought, you know, I, I want to be a politician, you know, run for uh, political offices. Mm. And after a while, I just changed my mind. I say, you know what, I'm going to get my, I met someone, they say, you know, Andy, in the U.S., if you get uh, licenses, you can make a lot of money. So mm. I went and got my real estate broker license, my insurance license, and my security license, Series 7, which is you can sell stock, bonds, mutual funds. Absolutely. And how old were you when all this was happening? You yeah, like really. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. just feeling very, very unaccomplished right now. And, right. <laughs> I was like uh, 19, 19, 20, 20 years old. Wow. You put us in our place here. You yeah, come yeah. here to you come to our living room. And I was, basically... you know, Adam, I was thinking he was talking about running for office. And I was like, just like Adam. And then he was like, and I got all these licenses. I was like, not just like Adam. <laughs> not like Adam. <laughs> I got um, I got one license. No, and then you I did. Yeah, everything I learned in law school. So you know, Mr. Hey. JD over there. Yeah, no, I I but but at nineteen to have three different ones and be able to sell securities. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, that that's again, people aspire to that. You did it. You did You're it. Making us look bad over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Andy, we joke, but I, we know we do know that you ha- you did have a have a rather super annoying experience that you came here to tell us about today. Yes. Hey, Adam. Um, you remember that guy, Andrew Gold, that we had on? I not only remember that we had him on our show, but he was kind enough to invite me on, on his show. And he's got an awesome podcast. It's called On the Edge with Andrew Gold, which really will have you on the edge of your seat. He's a BBC journalist, right? Totally. And he's got some of the world's most extreme and controversial people on his show. And when I say there's something for every podcast fanatic here, I really mean that. He goes from asking a female Mormon psychopath how she'd feel if he died in front of her in one episode, huh. to talking to a man who was in a plane crash and had to eat his friends. Ew! to survive the next. Wow, okay, so he doesn't really have any boundaries. <laughs> no boundaries. <laughs> so if I wanted to check this podcast out, what episode should I start with? Well, of course, you realize my first response would be the one with me. Oh, well, surprising. In, 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 addition, in addition to that, uh, he interviewed Amanda Knox, and you remember her case. I do, yeah. And, and it was asking her what really happened the night of her roommate's murder. If you'd love to be a fly on the wall inside of some of the darkest minds around, 
including mine. Andrew Gold has you covered. We really like this show a lot. And I really liked it. I really liked being on it, and I loved when he was on our show. Anyway, check out On the Edge with Andrew Gold on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Each week, Wired's podcast, Gadget Lab, tackles the biggest questions in the world of personal tech, bringing the best of Wired to audio with breaking news and analysis, spanning mobile apps, gear, startups, and beyond. Recent episodes of Gadget Lab have explored topics like how private really are the newest Apple devices, and what does the advent of self-driving technology at companies ranging from Lyft to John Deere mean for workers who make a living behind the wheel? If these questions get the gears in your head turning, head over to Gadget Lab with new episodes available each week wherever you get your podcasts. In 2005, uh, I moved to Vegas. We, I did a, a project in Vegas called Caballos de Oro. So in 2005, it, with 84 investors of mine, we bought a piece of land northwest of Vegas. And this is, we, in 2000, you, you have to go back in 2004, I bought a piece of land, five acres on, in the southwest, southwest of Vegas, and we flipped it for 4.5 with entitlements, with a fruit set of plans that a builder can build. This spot, I don't, I'm not that familiar with Las Vegas. And for our listeners who may also uh, only have a kind of main strip sort of understanding of Las Vegas, where was this property and, and what was it like? So you, as you know, Vegas is, is like, you just think of it like a, a quadrant. There's four quadrants. Right. There's, there's a, so you have Las Vegas Boulevard runs in the middle. Yeah. And you have Northwest, Northeast. And you have Southeast, which is Henderson, and you have the Southwest that's the up and coming where you have the Red Rock Casino. So I'm, I'm like, we are like in the Summerlin area, Northwest of Vegas. When, when Vegas built, completed the Beltway Highway, the, called it 215, you, now you can, you can go 360. It's like a loop. It's the loop around Vegas, yeah. yeah. And exactly. this is inside the loop? Inside the loop. Okay, so it's not cheap. So you didn't buy that for... So that's why, because it sounded expensive to me, but now I get it. Yeah, what, what you have to envision yourself is this five acres. Uh, the back of you is, 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 un, is Red Rock Canyon National Park. The view is the key, you know, Any, anything that you buy in Vegas. Now, were you, were you building multifamily or were you building single family homes? Uh, we were thinking about building 30 townhomes. Okay. On Good. that property. Got approved for 30 townhomes. Then, it, it, so this is 2005, so I pay $5 million. Yeah. It took like 16 months to get approval because in 2006, seven, the city of Las Vegas was very busy with this major developments. So yeah. you have to get a zone change and you have to get uh, approval for their entitlements. Right. What, what was the uh, rate of return you were expecting on that overall? Uh, so we, our cost was found $500 per square foot to build. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's not cheap. No. Nope. No. So you were and building we would, nice, and really that's, nice townhouses. That's town in 2005. Houses. So that's yeah, yeah. That's right. And we project to sell for a thousand dollars a foot. So wow, that's so also not cheap. <laughs> I guess I, I, as someone who knows absolutely nothing about uh, real estate or development or anything like that, I think what they have to wonder is, uh, you obviously start off with a lot of research here, but how do you pick the spot? Like why Las Vegas specifically, or why uh, the Mesa, Arizona? Okay, because it, what you have to look at where the growth is. Mm -hmm. And Vegas in 2005 has the longest growth, you know, growth, growth in history mm -hmm. with real estate. People are moving there. There's, the key for Nevada is there's no state tax. Right. So you have a lot of Californians are moving there. You're going to save 11 percent in taxes mm -hmm. if you make over two hundred fifty thousand dollars per year. Right. Right. So that's where we saw we saw the growth in all the Sun Belt states like Nevada. Arizona cost of living in Arizona is a lot cheaper than California. Yep, and you is is you have the the, the huge growth in Phoenix area right now in the last five years. Well, yeah, people have been work. pouring across the border. That's right. You know, when we started our company, part of the reason that we we came to Arizona is there was a huge pool of very qualified fraud experts because all of the major financial institutions had moved their fraud centers from the San Francisco area to Arizona for taxes and, and work rules. So there was a, the, 
you know, Arizona was kind of like the Wild West in those days. In terms of being the Wild West, were any of those regulations in place for, uh, say, like anti-fraud or anything, or was it just more uh, red tape? No. You, you know, when we bought the property in 2005, when you buy a property, you usually buy it in an LLC, right? Or mm-hmm. a C Corp, or S Corp, because it's, number one is it's, uh, LLC is limited liability corporation. And, and so you, it's the pass through corporation. So you insult yourself with, for a liability reason. You don't want to buy in your name because if someone walks across your property, he gets injured. Now you get sued. He can bring you in. At least an LLC is a separate entity, and you, you insulate it from 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 legal liability. All right. So you create this LLC, and right. you put and you put the property in it, right? Right. Then what? Then got it approved for thirty thousand homes. Then the market crashed. I couldn't get construction loan because when the market crashed in two thousand nine. The banks are not landing. This sounds the same as what just happened to you in Mesa. Yep, same. Okay. We it's have, called we it's have. called economic cycles, Bo. So <laughs> right. hey, and hey, hey, tough. hey, hey, hey! I resemble this 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 um, ignorance you seem to think I have. Um, so, um, but but for real, like, did you do the same? I mean, did you did you go? Did you put a sign up outside this property and start building? No, the- no, because in, in Nevada, we just have raw land. We didn't have any physical uh, structure on the property. Right. Mm-hmm. So with raw land, you can just land bank it. That's why we did. You know, when the market, you can get the loan. So what you do, you just pay the property taxes. So in 2015, uh, you know, I've been paying the property taxes for 10 years. 10 years. In, yeah. in 2015, on New Year's Eve, which is December 31st, 2015. Someone I didn't know went into the Secretary of State, removed me as the managing partner, managing member of my own LLC. And within 30 days, he took out two loans on the property. He went out and used the property as a collateral for two private lenders who he borrowed against, you know, use the land as, as collateral. So he borrowed, you know, $1.7 million. One loan is for 1.2, the other one for 550. And in 2016, he didn't pay off the loan and I received a foreclosure notice. What happened when you don't pay off a hard money loan in a year, the loan will call, the, the, the lender will call the note due. And if you don't pay off the interest- They take they the property. Is, they take the property and the trustee is the third party that in charge of the sale. They have to reach out to all the previous owners in the chain of title because every property has to change of title, what they call a title report. Just to, just to kind of back it up here because I'm a little bit uh, flabbergasted by what you said. How no, no, I'm also, to... Travis, I'm yeah. with you 100%. Right. I'm like, huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, my, my jaw's been on the uh, floor <laughs> since you said that. How did he do this? Do you know? All you have to do is you just if anybody with any knowledge of white color crime all you have to do is find an llc that has the piece andrew our producer beep him everything he says from here to when he finishes telling you how to do the crime yeah yeah, we don't want to do we don't want a (laughs) how-to no no we do actually andy i'm kidding i'm totally kidding what so is it that easy very easy because the the secretary of state of nevada they, they 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 their charter, when they was established by uh, the you know the people of Nevada, the the citizen of Nevada, they they just a middleman. They don't they don't verify anything. Every time that you form an LLC in Nevada, that's how people do it. They they just they submit the articles of incorporation to the state, and the state just accepts it. And the state goes, yeah, whatever you say. Boy, howdy, Adam. <laughs> yeah. I guess you, Travis, and I are going to have to set up some LLCs <laughs> in Las Vegas. But- <laughs> Absolutely. Do you know if they did it like in person or electronically or like, it, right is now, it really just walking right on and in saying like, hi, I'm now the, uh, I'm now the head of this. Yeah. What you, you do is go on the secretary of state's website and for $150, $175, you can amend the list. You can amend the list of managers, amend, amend the, you know, the physical address of the business. It's, it's so easy. And all you have to do is if you're a crook, there's a there's like a disclaimer say, you know, you know, if you commit this, it's going to be 
class C crime, but no one cares, you know? Where they, so they have a clause saying, are you a crook? And then you, you say, no, 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 not me. Right. No, 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 no. I, I'm just a guy who owns this property. I'm Andy Pham, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that's the that's ticket. Right. But, he changed, yeah. but he changed the name completely, right? At the, yeah, what he, he did is just remove me. Oh, geez. Adam, remove me as a managing member. You know, when you remove somebody as a managing member, you put yourself in there. Now you have the authority to act. Totally. We have their company. But totally. okay, I have a question, Adam. Yeah. So yeah. I love your house in Phoenix. Can I, Andy, can you help me? I just want to remove him from it. And no, you can't help it, me. How well, come, the, you, yeah. how come no, this the, guy could do it? I don't get it. Like, See, the, the bad news in my house in, in Phoenix, it comes with my wife. And trust me, like a hawk. She watches oh, everything. She would, and also, she's a boxer, so she would really probably yeah, she would not hurt, a dog well. either. She like the like Muhammad Ali style. She punch yeah, she would hurt you. No, but she but <laughs> no, but so. for for real, like how come? Obviously, I can't just walk over to the you know whoever the authorities are in Oregon where Travis is and say you know I'm taking Travis off of the deed of his house. It's my house now. Um, you could probably swing it, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, Travis is ready to negotiate with you right now. So. Yeah, no, 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 I don't want his house because he doesn't take care of his lawn. But I... <laughs> I it's spotless. One of my neighbors just helped. <laughs> I, I, I'm wondering, no, for real, like, it, there are no protections. You never got a note from them saying, hey, uh, interesting that you're no longer on here. Or, by the way, you're no longer on this charter or whatever. What, 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 uh, so the guy did this on New Year's Eve, right? Which is... Uh, Nobody's you know, watching December. on New Year's Eve, and yeah, it's Vegas, right. for heaven's sake. You know. 2015. Uh -huh. So, usually, when, when someone make a change to your LLC, the Secretary of State will send you, like, a very generic email. Say, you, you know, the amended list has been updated to, for your company. And it, it, so what happened to us is it went... My office manager is the one that handles all the LLC renewal fee, right. and she she does that on your anniversary's date. So when we formed a company that hold that piece of property was in November, so of 2005. So she went and updated the list in November, ah. and she doesn't think about it anymore because you have to come in right. and pay the annual renewal fee every right. single year before uh, your, on your anniversary date, which is the day that you formed the company. Okay. So she did that in November and she didn't think about it until next year of November, mm -hmm. but the crook went in on December. So when she got, when the generic email came, it went into the spam folder and she didn't know. Ah. Oh, and it was genius because it was sent at him on New Year's Eve when not only did it go into the spam folder, but it got buried in the spam, spam folder. folder. Along with all the New Year's Eve party invitations. Well, and all the other crap. So that is yeah. that is intense and, and, and smart. And, and you know what? This happens a lot because it, it ha because my story got published in the Las Vegas Review Journal and a lot of people reach out to me. So, you know, in Vegas, a lot of there's a lot of property owners that own properties, rental properties, then they live overseas. So you know what? When they, they they own the rental properties, then they they collect the rent. It's you know the tenant paid them the monthly rent in the you know in their bank account. And next thing you know, because all the rental properties own in an LLC, you know most of the smart people. And next thing you know, the tenant or the people unscrupulous crooks they they remove them as a managing member of their own LLC and and say, look, I'm, I have control of the house now because I'm the manager of this LLC that owns the home. So that happens a lot in Vegas, you know, as people own properties in an LLC rental property. Well, I'm I'm actually watching Bo right now. He's on his computer and he's wait, he's at the Secretary of State's office in Nevada right now looking for properties. I already set up three three LLCs. One is watch me steal this property. <laughs> <laughs> LLC and the no, but no, real. but this this also th this kind of a problem is also a real problem in the in the elder community too. I mean, if you're talking about in the yeah. non-business community, a lot of senior citizens who own homes without mortgages, sure. people right. find a way to steal their identities and then take that property and get a mortgage against it, and the only time the victim finds out about it is exactly what happened to you is when the mortgage wasn't properly paid for 
on a monthly basis and then they suddenly get a foreclosure. And notice. also, and also Adam, it's like, uh, you know, another a kind of crime where we all know about that kind of elder abuse and, and, and targeting elders. But I didn't know that there's so much about this business identity theft, which no, is this essentially is a, what happened here. This is a thing. Now, Andy, based on this, this business identity theft situation with you, this is horrible. But I get the feeling you, a guy like you, did not take this sitting down. No, I get I, the feeling he turned it into a business. I think, yeah. <laughs> he was like, hmm, this gives me an idea. Yeah. <laughs> No, but for real, like, what did you do? How did you get the property back or did you have to eat the loss, sir? So I just, it took me four years. What? To, to get my property back. Four the, years? The, four years. The court four system years. does not move swiftly. So this is worse than a debit card, Adam. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and were you able to identify the person who did it or the people? Yes, yes I did. Oh, wow. Because, you know, when uh, you find out that person, when you, when you file the is the quiet title action to get your property back. When someone steals your property, you have to go to what they call quiet title action. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And you, you, you discover that the guy that took out the loan is is uh, is the individual that lived in Colorado. What? Hmm. Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, silence, silence. I think I hear it coming. I hear, I hear Bruce Willis <laughs> loading a gun and he's really pissed off and he's Yippee about to get some... I hear a revenge story coming. <laughs> yep, did, yep. Did, so, you, did you do anything to this guy? I mean, please, come on. You grew up, you probably grew up in a situation where you're good with your hands. I, I mean, at least till you're 11. So <laughs> come on. Did you get it? Did you beat him up? Did you slap him happy? So let me get oh, this straight. No, no you're wait. asking a man to talk about a felony. physical harm. A felony, harm. yes. A felony. I want, I want him to admit I, I to a felony. I don't think you're going to get a, a straight answer to this. Okay. My, my bet is, my I, got bet, you. I could yeah. be wrong. My bet yeah. is what? you effectively use the legal system and then you use the criminal justice system as well, correct? Right. Yes. What I did is, I, Gosh. you know, going through the legal system cost me over half a million dollars in legal fees just to get my land back. Isn't that amazing? You got to, you got so to, someone to steals it and then you got to pay. Yeah. And it's not pay. like they got the money to pay you back. Did, did they, it did, were you able to get like a judgment against them and get money back from yeah. these guys? Yeah. It, yeah. We, I, I got back only the, the, the court awarded me 250,000 in legal fees. So I'm trying to get that from the guy, the crook that stole the property. So throughout this whole ordeal, you know, you, there's so many, there, this whole story is, 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 is like unbelievable. I could never perceive that could happen to me because it's just when you tell people the story, they couldn't believe it, you know, and how could someone steal your property? And it's easy. Just go on the secretary of state, remove somebody else's uh, LS member, uh, wow. managing member. Unbelievable. So, well, who, wait, Bo, te Bo, take your hand off the mouse. <laughs> take the hand off the mouse right now. <laughs> I, think, I think it's Travis, actually. It looks like he's the one who's up to something. <laughs> I was just going to ask, uh, it, after you found out who he was, like, what was the guy? I mean, just, I'm imagining a black cowboy hat and, uh, you know, handlebar mustache or something. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, a real villain. Yeah. W who was the, the who was your the, criminal the, the guy was a a, a dentist no in Colorado. a dentist oh, wow. <laughs> yeah oh my god a, a, a dentist. The story just gets better, and better you got you had your proper your business you experienced business identity theft via dentist <laughs> nobody yeah. likes the dentist but that's really yeah, taking I mean, it a bit this, far the, yeah this guy is so is but did not. he have a history of like uh, I don't know, like stealing people's uh, ID while he had them on, on laughing gas. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> he has a history of, of doing this in the wow. past, you know? Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's the reason why. So, so when you found this out, did you, did it help you kind of? So, so what I did is, you know, I, I sick, I try to, you, when you, when you find this out, you, you go with the legal system, but the legal system is very cumbersome yep. and mm. painful and it, it's just very slow. And sometimes you want to, what? Like you just want your property back. Doesn't and you want to call you know? Bruce and, Willis, and you want to slap yeah, the guy. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for me, the the thing that I want to do is like try to shame this person because that's all you can do, you know. Right. So what I did is when the story got published in the Las Vegas Review Journal, 
I, I flew up there and went in high school, you read a book called Scarlet Letter. You want to shame this guy? You know? Yes. And, OK. And, OK. And hand out newspapers. So you were going to put a Scarlet Letter on this dude? Did, wait a second. That's right. Now, this is the man, Adam, who, when he couldn't finish his project in Mesa, <laughs> moved to Mesa <laughs> and started to help people unpack. So I'm kind of guessing we're going to get a call back here. This, this, almost, this almost reminds me. Of, there was a movie many, many years ago called Marathon Man, starring Dustin Hoffman. And there's a scene in the movie where they're trying to get him to give information, and he's innocent, he does nothing. And they put him in a dentist chair, and they take a drill, and they just start drilling his teeth. So I'm saying to myself, Andy went to Denver and got the guy in Ooh, his and he own put him in dental his own chair, chair. Yeah. and Adam, started you're a drilling. Sick puppy, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I, I, you got to see the movie. Got to uh, rent I, the movie. All right, that doesn't. I don't think that's. I don't that's, think he did that. I don't. Think, okay. I don't think he did that. But what did you so, do? How did you shame okay, him? So, so what I did is I also built a website called, you know, stopj.com. Oh, I love this. Nice. So that morning, I, I hired like uh, 250 newspapers from the, you know, Las Vegas Review Journal, articles that brought it with me on the plane. So I start highlighting the, the articles on the front page. You know? <laughs> oh. Then I put a flyer on there. I put like, land thief, dentist from Colorado, land thief, you know. <laughs> if you know and this man. <laughs> I, put, I, I call him a land thief. Then I hand out the newspaper. On top of it, there's a there's a, like an eight by 11 photo of him within oh, wow. and this is yeah. in his neighborhood or yeah around his office dental office oh Ooh. my goodness gracious all the offices me. knock on every door so so we happen to have mr land thief uh naughty pants here um uh mr land thief how did you feel about it when mr fam was passing your photograph around not great oh not yes. great <laughs> 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 so, what did he do? Did he do it's anything? Like he to... felt like there was a cavity in his heart. Right? <laughs> he did oh, have a cavity man. in his heart. But listen, Andy, what did you? What did he do? Did he chase you out of the neighborhood? Anything, or did you just keep doing it until he yeah, had a heart attack? I did it. <laughs> I did it for a day, and um, next thing you know, he within five months later, he filed a defamation lawsuit against me. Don't don't you love it? I'm going to take your property. You're going to find out that I took your property. You're going to tag me as the person who stole your property. And then you're going to come after me saying, well, yeah, but I didn't really steal your property because no one said I stole it yet. Months later, by the way. Yeah, yeah five months is a pretty long time. How, how come How come it took so long? Because he, he waited for me. He waited for the website. He waited for, you know, all the things that he couldn't get me for the defamation. That's the reason why. He, he, he waited out and because I, I went to the police, I went to the FBI, I went to everybody asking for help and we, nobody helped you. They say, just go, this is a civil matter. You have to go to the legal system. How much, how much money did he get away with this dude? Uh, he got $1.7 million. But did they ultimately go, I mean, did the financial institutions go back after him at all? Since when it was No, because we, we subpoenaed all the bank records. When how, the money came through from escrow, when the lenders loaned the money, subtracted their points and their fees, uh -huh. and it went to the Bank of wow. America. He opened the, the bank account under our name, which is the, the name of the LLC, Caballos de Oro. Right. And we, we subpoenaed the record. We saw the money came in from the lenders, yep. and it went out the next uh, a couple of days, it all went out. You know, he 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 paid it off. He 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 loaned it to himself. He took out money paying off other people. It, it went to all like the crooks that. But then, friends. but then, mm. did the lenders ever get the money back at all? Or are they looking? Are they looking for you to give the money uh, to give them? That's right. They, they, the lenders got title insurance, so they always gonna get paid in their legal fees. The, the legal fees to pay. But I would assume the title insurance company would then go after whoever stole the property, right? Yeah, the, the title insurance, so throughout this whole ordeal, one thing I learned is the title insurance, they don't want to sell until until they drag you, until you go bankrupt. They want you to sell the property first before they 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 pay out whatever the liability is, you know? All right, so the bottom line is you have your property back, right? 
and the and the money are you they've given up so they're not coming after you for the money right no i get because i haven't i didn't get the money because i didn't because you didn't it, take the money it yeah. wasn't yours yeah, i didn't take the money yeah. yeah so that was that their is, loss they had to go right. claw that back yeah, because to uh, eight thousand pages of discovery, I never give this guy authority to act on my behalf. Right, and I never get any consideration because when you sell something, you get consideration. You have to get, since consideration could be money, could be a Rolex watch, could be like a farm, could be anything, and I get, I need, I got nothing. So they, 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 there's no way that they can say, okay, Andy got some money. I didn't, I didn't get anything. Bo, Bo's got a tractor, by the way, that he'd like to give you his consideration. Oh, no, I'd be happy, you know, uh, I'd be happy to help you just so that you let me in on the entry level on whatever you do next, <laughs> but um, just as a friend. But I would say um, here, my tractor is in Connecticut, though. I don't know. It might be cheaper just to buy one in, in Nevada. Um, the... Uh, the question I have is, you know, you seem like uh, uh, a sane individual and uh, a, a kind guy. You look like a nice guy. Um, but that's not why you're here today. Are you telling us this story just because you like telling about horrible things that have happened to you? I mean, it, it sounds to me like the only reason I can imagine talking about this is to make sure that other people don't fall victim to a similar kind of problem. Business identity theft... I thought was pretty uncommon, but I, I'm wondering now. It's not really uh, uncommon, yeah. That's right. Adam is right. Because you live in, in 20 years ago when the state, all the state digitized information, they didn't put safeguards for, for business owners. And most of the business owners, small business owners, and they, you think about when you form an LLC, you think outside our mind. I have to worry about my employees. I worry about how many can meet payrolls. No one cares about the LLC. Now with the crooks, they know that they can go online and for $175, you can amend the list and hijack the company and take out credit on the, on the business. And you never know. And if you do it during the time of year when someone's not looking. That's right. Or if you get your email address uh, compromised somehow. That's right. Oh, imagine that if they just hack into your email so they know that when that email is coming, they can just grab it and you never see yeah, it. Yeah, one reused password. Wow. But I also feel understanding your story now and understanding your life history now, this doesn't just end with you getting the property back and you're going on your merry way. I get the feeling you've used this as an opportunity to help other people. That's right. So what I did is, you know, when you go into uh, a, a really traumatic experience in your life, you want to build, you want to see, okay, what's my purpose? So you, you say, okay, what am I, what, why, why did this happen to me? So you, 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 you internalize that and you figure out solutions and you say, okay, I can build a company called Company Alarm. So what we do is we, we people have their cell phone 24 seven. It's like their right hand, you know, extension drive right hand so what they do is we, anytime that someone make a change we sent you a text notification to let's say you put five five different mobile numbers your your kids everybody they can get the same text and say um adam you're you have been removed as a managing member of adam levine you know 11 llc adam right. levine no maroon five levine. yeah you're no longer I, i'd like to remove adam levine and become <laughs> yeah. the managing head of his llc but now what's the name of the company again it's called company company alarm company alarm and and does it operate by by monitoring these uh secretary of state uh transactions that's right. Is it all secretaries of state or just the state of Nevada? Uh, 28 states we are in. 28 states. Why mm. not See, Connecticut? Please say Connecticut. Are you in Connecticut? No, we, we not. need you. We need <laughs> you. Secretary of state in Connecticut. You should be listening. Uh, so is that is that just like you is? Uh, so what? How does that work? You you get meetings with them and then you sort of figure out. They try to figure out whether or not they need you or how. how what's the arrangement? Uh, so so we, what we do is in Nevada we have. Uh, we build our software to monitor uh, the data in the back. When you when you form an LLC, you have you have uh, you, you have your physical address, your manager, remember your name. Then we 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 have that field. Then our software, when you sign up with us, our software will verify that information. So you you when you signed up, you have those fields that you filled in. Then you say this is correct. Then every time that every four hours. We monitor the state's website. If there's a change in one field, like your your name, 
then we will notify you. Every 24 this hours, software. you say? Every four hours. Every, Every four, four hours. Yeah. Jesus. And so is that like an automated script or automated technology, or do you just you know have to have some folks kind of sitting there hitting a <laughs> refresh once every four hours? Or sitting in the office going, yeah. I saw you. Who are you? Yeah. What did you do? <laughs> yeah, just so, wondering uh, how the uh, process works there. So in Nevada, we have uh, – so our software, what we do is we subscribe to the FTP, mm -hmm. the, the data protocol. The and file we, transfer protocol. Yes, mm -hmm. and we we compare that every every you know every day every twenty four hours if there's uh, a change. Oh, that makes sense. So you just take the two separate files, just see what's changed, and that will give you that, the notification. And it's all right. you know, it's public information, so it's that's right. Yeah. You got it. This is brilliant. This is a brilliant idea. So Adam, you just you just figured out what how we can make our next gazillion trillion dollars. Absolutely, with Andy. We're going to figure this out together, yeah. all of us. <laughs> no, Andy, it's brilliant. That's true. You, you got to start somewhere. That's right. <laughs> Thanks. I, I appreciate the vote of confidence. Anyway, Andy, awesome. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good thank evening. You so thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Terrific. Thank you. Holy f Dude. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, a lot of the stuff that he was talking about in terms of the real estate market was way over my head, just completely outside of my area of expertise. But when he was really explaining it, I was just like, oh, wow. Not only does that make more sense when you're describing it, I also had no idea it was that easy to defraud people in the real estate uh, industry. But I also didn't understand, and Adam's, you know, was worked in real estate for a long time. So this, Adam, thank you for nothing. Um, I didn't That's realize how uh, smart it is to be in that business because clearly he's done very well for himself. I don't know, listen, I mean, ma many of the great fortunes in this country and around the world have been real, real estate. estate based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I am uh, amazed. I am not going to, contrary to your defamation of me, I am not going <laughs> to start <laughs> stealing LLCs. <laughs> But that was that was really eye opening, and and I am so glad, Adam, that you brought Andy to our attention. Business identity theft is something that most people don't think about, and they really do need to think about it. You, it, it's it's again just another example of the fact that uh, ultimately you have to be your own guardian because you never know at any moment what someone can do to you, and therefore it's important to just stay alert. Be aware, practice, as we like to talk about, the three M's. How do you minimize your risk? How do you effectively monitor? In this case, he didn't know because no one told him until it was almost too late. I mean, it was too late. And this, I just, you know, my dentist, my dentist. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You're My treading dentist. on care you're treading on very sensitive territory. Listen, buddy. he's got his hands in his mouth with sharp tools. My dentist is he's the, got his is hands a, in your mouth with sharp tools. He's this I don't I'm, it's late over here in New York. He's a saint. My dentist is a saint. And I I I am mad at, at Andy's thief because He's, he's heard a profession that I thought was ironclad. I thought dentists were, I felt sorry for him. They're always feeling bad about how they're inflicting pain on people. <laughs> like this guy clearly wasn't feeling bad about it. Well, I think he was feeling bad after he had a bunch of glossy photos of himself uh, printed up. <laughs> That's a different kind of bad. That's butt sore. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's really pretty fascinating. I mean, that takes, but, but then again, Andy has demonstrated throughout his career. He's got guts. Yeah, that is next level thinking. I, uh, I strongly approve of that uh, revenge. I do too, and I don't. This. I feel like I was pretty close on the Bruce Willis thing. Mm -hmm. He just did you it with paper. Close. He did it with yeah. paper. Uh, I love him. I love Andy. I love him. And uh, Adam, I love him. I love know, him. Adam. Bo, my birthday is only uh, I don't know how many months away. It's not, you know quite a few months away. You have time to figure this out. I would like an Andy Fam T-shirt. And if you get me an Andy Fam t-shirt. Because you are fam. I'm a fan. Yeah. No, no, I'm a fan. I would love to be fam, but I'm a fan. I'm a fam fan. And I want the t-shirt. And I'll tell you something. I will wear that t-shirt on the show. And you can put it on Instagram. And I will be proud of it. 
because he's cool. <laughs>《What the Hack with Adam Levin》is a production of Loud Tree Media. It's produced by Andrew Stephen, the man with two first names. You can find us online at loudtreemedia.com and on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Adam K. Levin.